Hello there. Welcome to our sharing with you on the local taxation, this time dealing with the local taxes that the municipalities are entitled to. The municipalities essentially have four types of uh, taxes that they can implement. But the three are, are too uh, petty, if I may use the word petty, to worry about. It is the tax on business that really becomes a unique, a very interesting uh, uh, feature for the municipalities. And we will deal with them because there are two components. Number one, if you are a manufacturer, uh, you have a different rate versus when you are in the sales and marketing area, either as a wholesaler, distributor, or a retailer. The second aspect of the whole exercise on municipal uh, taxes on business is that when you deal with normal commodities, they call it the normal articles, uh, ordinary articles of commerce versus when you start manufacturing and selling uh, essential commodities that they have enumerated as eight groups of commodities. Because when you are either a manufacturer or a, 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 a one involved in sales, your normal tax, business tax for being a manufacturer or uh, you are involved in sales and marketing is suddenly cut into half if you are dealing manufacturing or selling essential commodities and this is what is really that interesting in this area in fact when you go now to the cities who are also entitled to adopt the uh, taxes on business parallel to municipalities the complication there is that whatever the municipality is entitled to collect, the city is able to mark this up further by 150%. And so this is the beauty and uh, you will see that the uh, local tax uh, slides on cities uh, is, has already been uploaded and so you can take a look at that one. I'd like to uh, dedicate this uh, series of uh, lectures, but most specifically municipality, to my hardworking associates in the University of Manila, particularly Madam Emily Dodson de Leon, our president, and our chairman of the board, uh, Dr. Munet de los Santos, and also our corporate uh, Secretary Attorney Justado Madrid and the rest of the deans uh, and all the faculty members and workers and employees at the University of Manila. We're having definitely some difficult times and challenges uh, as we failed to uh, administer our final examination uh, last semester and we therefore are at a loss on how do we manage all of these things? My bigger problem is, of course, the College of Law, and I am not the only dean of the College of Law that is having this problem. So far, uh, I have not received any positive feedback from any law school, except that everybody is trying to talk about online uh, legal education and having meetings uh, electronically through Zoom, or uh, probably Google. But uh, other than that, uh, I think the University of Manila is so far the only one that is way ahead in online uh, uh, legal education because we have at least uploaded already about eight uh, of our uh, electronic modules through YouTube. Anyway, I am uh, Dean Joe Santos Balagtas Biscera the incumbent law dean of the College of Law eh, of the University of Manila and also the Vice President for Legal Affairs and a member of the Board of Trustees. 
I have a bachelor's uh, degree in business administration, major in accounting, and a certified public accountant from the University of the East, Summa Cum Laude. I hold the Master of Business Administration, MBA degree, from the University of the Philippines in Diliman, graduating as magna cum laude and valedictorian. My Bachelor of Laws is from the University of the East, cum laude and valedictorian. After uh, graduating uh, from college, I immediately joined the corporate uh, world and gradually rose up to the level of senior corporate management in the area of finance. I was with Fuji Xerox, with Motorola, with ESO that became Petron, with Lasso Smith Klein, with Meralcos Construction Division, Eco Asia, with Delgado Brothers, Furadan, and Permaline. After I passed the bar examination as a working student, I started appearing as a trial lawyer in council in a number of regional and metropolitan trial courts all over Metro Manila and the neighboring provinces. I would take a leave and I would remember uh, the late Senator uh, Renato Cayetano kidding me in uh, saying, uh, Panero, how much do you lose in terms of waiving your... Uh, vacation leave versus uh, at that time uh, receiving only 2,000 for appearance eh, for appearance fees for council. And I said, well, uh, my dear Senator, at least when I retire from the private sector, I will not be jobless because I would already be uh, a, uh, an experienced a trial lawyer. And he said, what a way to aspire and uh, he said good luck. That's why I love uh, Senator Rene Cayetano. I missed him and he's one of my idols in the field of law. Anyway, without much ado, I continue to be part of the legal profession. I am an active as a as counsel and trial lawyer, continuing to appear in court, reaching up to the Supreme Court on my pleadings and appeals. And at the same time, I had the chance to teach for 30 long years uh, in the Graduate School of Business, uh, teaching financial management at De La Salle University and the University of the Philippines. So today, I am still actively involved with uh, the field of law and this challenge of instituting online legal education is to me one of the more exciting ones, although I go to bed trying to upload all of this and complete this at about 2 o'clock almost every night and would be up again at 6 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, without much ado, allow me now therefore to present this, especially in the name of all of my law students at the University of Manila. the local taxation for the municipalities. Any discussion of local taxation will cover the following areas. The general principles of local taxation and we have a separate uh, module for that. The uh, local taxes for the provinces and they have seven and we have also another upload on that one. Uh, the cities that would be a combination of the taxes of the provinces and the municipalities and we have already uploaded uh, that, that uh, topic. The barangays entitled to six uh, uh, tax measures. Again, we have uh, our module on that one and we have just uploaded the real property tax module. So we have already covered municipalities uh, earlier. Unfortunately, when I reviewed the tables, I noticed some uh, typographical errors, uh, especially when, we, when I ran the Excel spreadsheet. So this one is essentially the same presentation I made uh, earlier for those of you who took a look at it, except that the tables, uh, the tax tables, percentage tables, 
for the uh, municipalities involving uh, businessmen who are involved uh, who, who are dealing with ordinary articles and those who are dealing with essential commodities have changed a little so let us move on now on the four local taxes in favor of the municipalities the most significant is the tax on business then they have the business and occupation fees and charges fees for sealing and licensing weights and measures and the fishery rentals fees and charges to start the ball rolling on the tax on business a very significant topic under this we have three types of business taxes falling under this category the first one is called the graduated percentage and fixed business taxes the second category on business taxes is the fixed percentage business tax and the third one is the annual business tax on a single single category of taxpayer on the tax on business graduated percentage and fixed business allow me to show the two major groupings by commodity under this the first commodity deals with essential commodities and the second one involves any regular articles or commodities of commerce in the essential commodities one is either involved in the field of manufacturing or in the field of marketing and selling the same when you are involved with regular articles you're either in the field of manufacturing or in the field of marketing and selling but there's a little uh, side uh, trip here those who are involved with liquors distilled spirits and wines and so for, for essential commodities we will have a group of taxes for manufacturers millers and producers for essential commodities those who are in marketing such as <clears throat> the wholesalers the distributors the dealers and retailers and of course the group of exporters when the uh, businessman is involved with any other commodity than the essential commodities listed here that we will show you he is involved in regular articles or commodities he is either again in manufacturing as a manufacturer miller or producer or he may be again in marketing such as wholesaler distributor dealer or retailer and as i was saying there is an allied group with the manufacturers here of regular articles they represent the assembler repacker processor brewer distiller rectifier and compounder of liquors distilled spirits and wines and so when you have these two groupings manufacturing and uh, selling dealing with two groups of products essential commodities and regular products last liquor the third one is rendering some service so these ones are dealing with tangible commodities this one is dealing with service and so we go now to the next category of uh, business tax the first category is this graduated percentage and business business uh, fixed business tax the second category are the fixed percentage business tax imposed on bankers and all other businesses that are performing services such as pawn shop beauty salon barber shop car repairs and gyms and finally the third category is an annual fixed business tax implemented on peddlers yung po naglalako katulad ng tumatawag ng malakas ang taho yung naglalako ng mga iba-ibang produkto they have an annual fixed business tax for peddlers moving now to the details of uh, the tax on business but zeroing in on the first group of products where the manufacturer the retailer or the exporter may be dealing with essential commodities articles of commerce 
let me immediately let me immediately jump into uh, the overall picture that if you are dealing with regular products under the essential commodities the manufacturer pays 37 and one half percent of one percent if it is a retailer dealing with regular products he is charged 50 percent of one percent same with the export on the other hand if he deals with essential commodities if he is paid if the manufacturer is paying regularly 37 and one half percent of one percent he is required to pay only 50% of that particular tax when he is dealing with essential commodities. That is why it is important to know whether the manufacturer is dealing with commodities and there is one sample that is already uh, looking inside to the window when he is dealing with rice and corn in the field of manufacturing. So these are essentially our rice farmers. Now, on the other hand, <coughs> If a retailer is dealing with rice and corn, he would normally also be asked to pay one half of the 50% of 1% tax. And so it is very important for us to understand what are these eight essential commodities that will cut down our regular business tax rate by 50%. Kalahati lang po ang ibabayan. So the first one would be the manufacturers, retailers, and exporters dealing with the first essential group of rice and corn. The second essential commodity group would be the flour, which is either wheat or cassava, meat products and dairy products. In the same category are food, sugar and salt, locally manufactured, processed or preserved, and agricultural marine and fresh water products, whether in their original state or not. The third group of essential commodities is cooking oil, ayun po ang minola, nandito po ang cooking gas, ang aming paborito na petrol gasol. The number five essential commodity would be the laundry soap. Nandito na po ang tide. Uh, laundry soap po, kasama na po ang detergent, and din na rin po ang medicine. Pwede rin yung manufacturer, or a retailer. And then number five would be school supplies. And number six would be cement. The number uh, seven uh, category of uh, essential commodity. Allow me just to bring this down a little so that we can see the other slides. On the seventh category, sorry, would be the agricultural implements equipment and post-harvest facilities or if you are dealing with fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides or herbicides or other farm inputs. And the eighth category is that a manufacturer or retailer is dealing with poultry feeds or other animal feeds. Take note, if under normal conditions the manufacturer pays 37 and one half percent when he deals with any of the eight or all of the eight, then his 37 and one half percent of one percent business tax is further cut down by one half. Kalahati lang po ang kanyang babayaran sa 37 and one half percent of one percent. If he is in the buy sell business, retailing, wholesale distributor, you know, and retailer, and he is dealing with any ordinary product like hardware and things like this, except uh, when, when you're dealing with uh, cement. If you are a retailer of on ordinary hardware item, you are charged 50% of 1%. But if you are suddenly selling cement, the cement will only require you to pay one half of 50% of 1%. So that is the beauty of the tax situation for business in so far as the municipality is concerned. It is, uh, to my mind, the more uh, complicated one and it is an exception to the fundamental limitation that the local government cannot charge any percentage or value added or VAT ad valorem tax based on sales because the municipalities are allowed under the local government code 
to charge tax on business based on gross receipts or through sales. Here is a sample of a manufacturer selling regular articles, not any of the eight. And when you looked at the left, his graduated percentage business tax is presented in this table. And the first column represents his sales or gross revenue in thousands of pesos. The second column is the second is the corresponding tax on each of these layers. And I computed this. This was uh, this is my contribution to this exercise. I tried to determine the layers of increase of sales and the layer of increase for taxes for purposes of determining for each layer how much is the tax being implemented under this graduated table. So for example, the starting point is for the businessman, uh, a manufacturer now, uh, for example, uh, say furniture, which is not one of the eight items there. And he is in Paete, he's producing furniture, uh, furniture sets made of bamboo or uh, any other type of Philippine uh, wood. And so if his sales is 10,000, he pays a tax, business tax of 165. And that means he had this, an increase in sales of 10,000 at 165. The tax rate of 165 is 1.65% or 1.7. If he now increases his sales from 10 to 15, in effect, he will be paying 220 uh, pesos tax on the 15. And that simply means that his sales increase by 5 and his tax increase from 165 to 220 or 55. So that we're saying here that the increase in sales of 5,000 from 10 to 15 or 5 increases tax from 165 to 220 or 55. That means his 55,000 is 55 uh, increase in tax divided by 5,000 in increased sales. He is being charged on the incremental sales of 5 by 1.1%. That is the how this table is uh, worked out. For example, if he sold 50,000, he pays 825 pesos tax. But he came from a sales level of 40,000, which means he has an increase of 10,000 in sales. And he is now paying 825. When he used to pay 660, he will have a 165 peso increase in tax. And that 10,000 increase in sales, accompanied by an increment of tax of 165, represents 1.7%. And this runs through across, uh, down the table here he sells 1 million he is to pay 10,000 pesos uh, tax and therefore he has an increase of 250 pesos from 970 there it is to 250 and he has an increase of 2,000 from 8 to 10 in his tax that simply means out of selling an additional 250,000 he pays an additional 2,000 in tax and therefore he is being assessed 0.8% in uh, incremental in, in tax on the increment. And that works out up to this level before we reach the threshold of 6,500,000. 6, At 5 million, he is to pay, based on the table, 23,100. His 1, 1 million increase in sales is accompanied by 3,300 in uh, taxes. The difference between uh, these two, 19,800, moving to 23,000. Therefore, he is being charged here 0.3% on his 1 million increase from 4 million. What I did here is to take a look at from 1.7 up to 0 0.3 and uh, got a, a, a simple uh, average by adding all of those increasing rates divided by the number of layers that we have. And so what is our conclusion? that based on this manufacturing table, the businessman who is moving from 10,000 to 5,000 is being charged on an average of 1.12%. More than 1%. Well, so what if we know that particular figure? 
the tax on business for municipalities gets to have a unique feature that when this businessman reaches 6.5 million, he is allowed to switch to the second uh, category, which is the fixed business tax. At 6,500,000, this businessman who is to pay uh, supposedly an average of 1.12 will now be allowed to pay only 37.5% of 1%. Meaning, if you convert that into a decimal, that's supposed to be 0.375%, less than 1%. So that if he pays under this fixed business tax, his tax burden is only 0,375. But if he is to pay under the table, I mean based on the table, not under the table, based on the table, he would be paying 1.12%, more than 1%. So which is cheaper? 0 0.3, which is cheaper? 1.1 or 0 0.375? Obviously your answer is this is cheaper. So that when he reaches the threshold of 6.5, it is logical for him to avail of the second layer, which is the fixed business tax of 37 and 1 percent of 1 percent. So this is the uh, feature of the municipal uh, tax on manufacturers who are not dealing with essential commodities. You have a, a table that is graduated which is on the average increasing the rate by 1 and 12 percent. But when you reach a threshold maximum of 6,005 and more, then the local government uh, will allow you to pay no more than 0 0.375, which is registering a savings of tax for you if you are selling more. Now, let us modify this. When this same manufacturer now, we said that he was selling, for example, uh, furniture in Paete, Laguna. But he decided, instead of selling uh, furniture in Paete, Laguna, he started uh, buying, uh, he, he started, uh, for example, dealing with any kind of the essential commodities. Uh, and you can pick up any one of them. For example, he starts dealing with uh, with the food items, uh, with meat, with dairy products. And so the moment he switches as a manufacturer, his commodity to essential commodities, one of the eight, his percentage tax table changes. Now, given this table, and we know this table will still increase by 1.12%. Uh, However, the 112% that he is uh, paying has been cut down by 50%. In effect, the original table as a manufacturer of regular commodity will be cut down by one half or 50% or what? Uh, yes. And so therefore, when this particular manufacturer who is dealing with essential commodity now reaches the threshold of 6.5, let's take a look at what happens. He switches to bis fixed business tax because this time, while he will still be contending with that same 6,500,000 and under normal conditions, he would be paying 37 and 1.5% for that or 24,375 in tax. The government now, the local uh, tax code, allows the municipality now to give him a significant discount. If he is selling essential commodities, only one half of his normal tax will be collected by the local government at 12187 So here, we already know that if he is selling a regular commodity, he is being charged 1.12% in terms of tax. But if he reaches a threshold of 6.5, he will be allowed to, so to, to move on to a lower rate of 37 and a half of 1%, which is 375. But if he changes his commodity to something that is essential, that is one of the eight, that same 37 and one half percent of 1% is further cut down by 12. So that 
if instead of selling furniture, he sells dairy products for the same amount of 6.5 million, he reduces his tax payment to the municipality, for example, of uh, Paete from 24,375 to 12,187 because of the tolerance of one one half percent discount on the regular uh, tax. So that is for a manufacturer of either a regular commodity or if he switches to essential commodities. Let us now take a look at the ones who, involve, who are involved in sales and marketing. So after the manufacturer produces his regular products, obviously the sales and marketing activity comes in. And one of the participants there, from the wholesaler, uh, distributor, dealer, retailer, a dealer. And he, for example, uh, uh, sells uh, the same, for example, uh, furniture. And therefore, he is confronted with this graduated percentage business that is normally relying on 50% of 1%. Now, you will notice here, here are the tax rates for him. And in the same exercise, I did the averaging out so that here, remember, the manufacturer is being charged on the average 1.16. This particular uh, trader, dealer, is being charged 1.42% on the average of the graduated tax. However, while the manufacturer is looking into a threshold of 6.5 million before he switches to the fixed business tax of 37 and one percent for the dealer he only waits for two million only one third two million and if he sells two million he can switch to not 37 and one percent he will switch to 50 percent of one percent let's take a look switching now to the fixed business tax of 50% of 1%. Intuitively and mathematically, we know that instead of him paying this average of 1.42%, the local government code is allowing him to pay only 0.5%, which is 50% of 1%, on his sales of regular products as a dealer, as a trader, you know, where he enjoys a reduction from 1.42 on the tax table to only 0.5 when he switches to the fixed business tax when rich he reaches 2 million in sales. Now, the same dealer handling the furniture in, uh, in uh, what you call this, uh, Paete Laguna, decides to switch to selling, for example, Casaba uh, Flour. Or, for example, Carabao's meal. Obviously, his tax table will be cut into half. So this used to be 18, but it's now 9. But we know for a fact that no matter whether he cuts it, he will still be charged a, a certain rate of uh, increase, which is one half of 1.42. That's about 0 0.7. But when he reaches 2 million, and he has the opportunity now to switch from the percentage uh, tabular tax to the fixed business tax. The municipality allows him to enjoy the benefit of one half discount against his traditional 50% uh, plus one. So if he's selling two million at 50% plus one, he pays 10,000 pesos. But since he was dealing with dairy products, which is one of the essential commodities, then he, he reduces his 10% payment to only one half of that, which is 5%, a significant savings. Well, a contractor is uh, in a different breed as uh, the manufacturer and the retailer. However, he also operates in the same line, like a, the, the, the dealer. Here, he has uh, his own tax table and his threshold is 2 million. And when he reaches 2 million, he's allowed to switch to the fixed business tax where he has 50% plus 1%. And therefore, he pays instead of 1.3% of the average of the tax, he pays only 0.5%.
I love you, some of you who are naughty may wonder. How come there is no variation of being a, uh, of dealing with either essential commodity or the ordinary commodity? A contractor is not dealing with products or commodities. So he doesn't have that kind of variation where he can cut this down further by 50%. To summarize now what is happening, if you have a group of manufacturers uh, who are dealing with essential commodities, remember the tax on manufacturers is 37 and 1.5 percent of 1 percent. But by reason of dealing with essential eight commodities, any of them, he cuts down further his uh, business tax by one half when he reaches 6.5 million in sales. When we continue with the business model where the product is now passed on in the sales and marketing group ultimately to a dealer, the dealer is subjected to the 50% of 1% as his uh, business tax. But he is given also that same one half percent. So he only pays one half of the 50% of 1%. And his threshold limit is not 6.5 but only down to 2 million. The other scenario is, is not the, the manufacturer or uh, trader is not dealing with essential commodities. He's dealing with regular articles, including liquor, distilled spirits, and wines. And so when he is either a manufacturer or somebody involved with the liquors, distilled spirits, and wines, this particular manufacturer goes back to the basic tax rate of 37 and one half percent of one percent if he reaches 6.5. Otherwise, he uses the uh, graduated table charging a higher tax rate. If on the other hand, that same uh, dealer or retailer switches from essential commodities to regular products, he is now, of course, uh, being charged the 50% of 1% without the benefit of this one. Uh, even it reaches 2 million. The same works out with the contractor who when he reaches 2.5 million enjoys the same privilege of switching to a fixed uh, business tax of 50% plus 1%. Now moving to the second group of uh, business taxes. This group is called the fixed percentage business tax and there are two major groups under this. The first one are the banks. The banks are subjected to a percentage tax on their first 400,000 peso interest income and other banking incomes. And the rate there is 2%. But if the banks should move to uh, a gross receipts of more than 400,000, the rate of 2% is cut down to 1%. On the other hand, if there are other businesses other than manufacturing or trading either in essential commodities or regular or regular commodities or contractor or banking the other businesses we mentioned like beauty salons you know pawn shop and things like this would be paying in uh, tax rates that are based on the sanguine and buyer tax rate uh, ordinance it may be uh, comfortable to say that since the popular uh, issue now is to charge 37 and 1 half percent uh, on manufacturers and 50 percent of 1 percent, it would be unreasonable for uh, the, uh, the the municipal government to be charging something much more exorbitant than this two. They may probably add a little more, but not so so much. And finally, the third tax category is the annual business tax implemented in the peddler. And this is a simple case of 50 pesos per peddler per year. Essentially, my dear friends, that completes our discussion on the local taxes. There are four of them that uh, the municipality can charge. And the most interesting is what we have uh, fully explored, the so-called tax on business imposed by the municipality. We structured that in saying that there is a tax rate for manufacturers at 37 and 1.5 percent. Uh, and if he were a uh, 
retailer dealer, he would pay 50% of 1%. The switching is at the level of 6.5 million uh, for the manufacturer and 2 million for the uh, reseller. However, it is interesting to note that while the businessman as manufacturer and as reseller are being charged these rates, the moment he deals with any of the eight essential commodities, what will be required of him is only 50% of the uh, uh, rate that he would be used uh, paying if he were dealing with a regular commodity. I hope that uh, this particular mechanism of local taxation for the municipalities where the three are guided by ordinance of the Sandigan Bayan as to the rates and they're not substantial. It is in the uh, tax on business by the municipality that the substantial revenue and the complexity of the arithmetic gets into the picture. What is important for you is to understand the principle involved. That there are two types of businessmen dealing with commodities that is uh, the manufacturer on the manufacturing side and the reseller, you know, salesman in various uh, personalities on the other side. And then they may be dealing with ordinary products subjected to the usual 37 and one half percent or 50 percent of one percent. But if they move on to an essential commodity, which are uh, which is any of the eight, then whatever is due under 37 and one half percent or 50 uh, percent as one percent becomes only payable to the tune of one half. With this, I'd like to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to again share with you some little knowledge about. Uh, local taxation at the municipal level and I hope especially for uh, the city mayor uh, for the municipal mayors for them to be able to understand this so that they'll be able to appreciate and convey to their constituents also uh, how this municipal uh, business tax is implemented for those who are taking the bar this may be the first time you're hearing the details of this you don't have to memorize it. What is important is for you to pick up the highlights that I summarized on the second to the last page. Marami pong salamat. Ako po ay uh, uh, napupuyat sa paggawa ng mga slides na ito. Sana naman po may nakalagay dyan sa baba na supposedly yung uh, aking uh, subscribe note. Pag nakita nyo po ito habang nanunood kayo, pakipindot lang po kasi it gives me feedback na meron naman nanunood sa akin. Napakasakit naman na ang aga-aga mong gumigising, matapos gabi ka na matutulog, masakit na likod mo, uh, masakit na ang paa mo, uh, lumalamp lumalampas ka sa pagkain, nung pala'y wala naman nanunood sa pinaghihirapan mo. Ang masakit para sa mga kukuha ng bar dumadami ang mga questions sa local taxation in my experience for the past five years that I have a bar reviewer in taxation. That is the reason why local taxation is not covered by many bar reviewers because it is a specialty type of taxation. And uh, for some reason, I got interested in it. And so I am always assigned to handle among my lectures in taxation, local taxation, including real property tax. And so... While it is still early, it is better to understand these local taxes and we have already given you all the coverages from general principles, you have, uh, the taxes on provinces, the taxes on municipalities, the taxes in the barangays, and the taxes on the city, that's the real property tax. I hope you have the complete set of YouTube updates and every now and then that you're not doing anything, you can log on to YouTube either using your uh, uh, desktop or you may have your own, uh, what you call this, uh, iPad or par probably even using your cell phones provided you have an access to internet, YouTube. Marami pong salamat, mahal ko po kayo at sana po ay pagpatuloy na makapaglingkod ako sa inyo by sharing the little knowledge I have. Thank you very much.